Hi everybody, thanks for joining us for the Your Next Move application information session. My name's Sharon Boyd and I'm the Student Liaison Officer for the Callaghan Campus. Um, we also have Danielle, if you'd like to introduce yourself, Danny. Hi everyone, I'm the Student Liaison Officer for the Arimba Campus and my name's Danielle. And Leah. Hi everyone, thank you for joining the session today. Uh, my name is Leah and I'm the Student Liaison Officer supporting Open Foundation Online students. Thanks, Leah. Okay, so just moving on to the acknowledgement of country. Just need to move my little thing out of the way. The University of Newcastle acknowledges the traditional custodians of the lands within the footprint of our areas. Awabakal, Darkenjung, Biripai, Waramai, Wanarua and Eora Nations. We also pay respect to the wisdom of our elders past and present. So today, um, we're obviously going to be talking about the application um, process. And it's going to give you some practical information about transitioning from your program. And your program could be Open Foundation, New Step or your PUG, and into a degree at the University of Newcastle. And all degrees at the University of Newcastle can be applied by the free internal application process, except for the Bachelor of Midwifery. And if you're thinking of applying elsewhere, we've also included some information on applying through UAC. So that could be with another university in New South Wales or the ACT. So as you can see, we have um, a really nice list of what we call guaranteed entry degrees. So there's 40 odd degrees that the University of Newcastle makes available to all of our students transitioning. Um, upon successful completion of their program. Successful completion essentially means that you do need to complete and pass with a minimum 50% of all of your courses required in the program. So if it was Open Foundation, you need to successfully complete and pass 40 units. Um, so you can use your enabling pathways program for competitive entry to all other degrees at the University of Newcastle. So competitive entry means that any of the degrees um, such as the Bachelor of Nursing, um, the Bachelor of Midwifery, a lot of the health um, and medicine programs, they're what we call competitive entry. So you do need to achieve certain um, results to get a good selection rank or ATAR that will allow you um, to be successful on gaining a place in that degree. But we can talk about that a little bit more later. You can also use your Enabling Pathways program for entry to other universities and education providers. We will give you a little bit more information later in the session, but it's very important that if you're looking at studying at another university, you are um, strongly encouraged to contact that university to ensure that you can gain entry into their degrees from our programs. Fees. <clears throat> this is just a little bit of information about fees for um, when you do go into your degree. So, um, just be aware that there is a link at the bottom of the screen there for you about um, getting access to more information on the website. It's really helpful if you do go in and have a look at it. But there are tuition fees that you do need to be paying when you go into an undergraduate program. Um, and you can choose to pay your fees up front, which is what they call prior to the census date of each semester or defer them through a HEX help loan. So a HEX help loan is essentially when you hear people talking about having a HEX debt. So your courses that you study, they'll actually be accruing the cost of them through this HEX help loan. You also need to be aware that there are some other um, fees that you do need to pay for, the student services and admin 
amenities fee um, or SAF and non-tuition related costs like textbooks, accommodation and parking. And also be aware that there are scholarships that are available that can provide you with some financial assistance throughout your studies in your degree. And you can find a nice healthy list of those scholarships available on the university's website. The application process. So with the direct application process, it's a simple online application form that you'll be um, given access to. Um, as you're probably all aware, it opens on the 18th of October and it doesn't open until 1 p.m. in the afternoon. You'll have plenty of time to apply. So don't worry about rushing on and doing it straight away because you'll have a lot of time. You don't need to get in first. Um, it's not based on first, or first in best dressed. So with the application process, you can list up to three degree preferences. There's no application fee for our internal process. Um, and if you check your email on the day that it opens, um, there will be a personalised link direct to that application form. Um, you should also be aware of uh, EAS, which is the Educational Access Scheme. And it's an application you can submit along with your direct application. Um, and that can help you to perhaps get a couple of extra points to go with your um, selection rank at the end of the program. But we'll give a little bit more information later. Um, key dates for the direct applications process and others. So as you can see on the screen there, um, direct applications open at 1pm on the 18th of October. Um, they close at 11.59pm on the 30th of November. So as you can see, you've got a good six weeks there to complete your application. Fully graded day is Friday the 26th of November and fully graded day is the day when your results from your studies in our programs are actually released. So that's the day that um, they can actually start processing applications and determining what your selection ranks would be. And as you can see there, from Monday the 10th of December, they do start sending out offers. Not all offers will go out all at once, but they will send them out um, progressively from that day. Um, I'll just briefly talk about the pathway to um, medicine through the Excellence Through Equity program. This is a special program that's been developed um, last year and it'll only be running until 2023 at this place, at this point in time I should say. There's up to six places that will be made available for students from our programs who are wanting to go on and become a doctor and get into the Bachelor of Medical Science. As you can see, there's a few requirements there. So eligible applicants must meet the ATAR equivalent of 89 based on your average mark received in your enabling course, um, demonstrate socioeconomic disadvantage and satisfy at least three equity indicators and provide a personal statement. And applications are due by 21st of November. And they're submitted via the direct application process. Just be aware that you don't list the Bachelor of Medical Science, Doctor of Medicine as one of your three preferences. It's a tick box on the direct application only. It's you highlighting that you're interested in applying for that program. Um, I would strongly suggest that you go onto the website and have a look at more information on that if you're interested in applying for the medicine program. Okay, the application process for UAC. So Leah, I'm going to hand over to you now. Thanks. Okay, thank you, Sharon. Um, so you can jump to the next slide for me. Thank you. So applying through UAC, the website um, is listed there. So that's UAC or uac.edu.au. Um, if you're interested in applying for the Bachelor of Midwifery at the University of Newcastle, this is the only degree where you're going to have to list your or apply through the UAC website. Um, all other degrees at the University of Newcastle can use our direct process via our website. However, midwifery is different. It's a different process and we need you to log on to the UAC website. We want you to include your other choices on that UAC application if midwifery is your goal. 
then please include your other backup options or your other preferences on that same application. Please don't submit two applications to, um, to the University of Newcastle and one via UAC, one application is sufficient. Um, if you're interested in applying uh, for another degree at another university, then you're going to have to apply through that state's tertiary admission centre. So UAC is the uh, tertiary admission centre for New South Wales and ACT, whereas if the university you're interested in was up in Queensland, that would be QTAC, uh, Victoria, VTAC and so on. So it is important for you to have a discussion with that relevant university in regards to that application and applying as an open foundation student. It's very important you have a discussion with that particular university as particular restrictions um, or additional uh, entry requirements may apply for that particular degree. So, so please um, contact them directly and have a discussion. Um, in some cases, they may advise you they have a, a different application process as well that you could use via their website, but that will be um, outside of our knowledge and out of our hands. So do contact them if you have um, questions about your application, if you're applying to another university. Uh, UAC does charge fees for, for their application. So at the moment, the fee is currently $200 as we are now after uh, the 30th of September. So just be aware that there are fees uh, when you're applying through a tertiary admission centre. Okay, next, next one, please. On your UAC application, um, you're able to list up to five degrees on that same application. And we do ask that you keep your UAC application number and PIN safe because you're going to need them as you log back in if you did need to change it. So keep, keep a record of those. Um, I'll go over now some important information about uh, the criteria involved with your UAC application. So when you're applying as, a, um, as an Open Foundation student, you're going to select that you're a non-Year 12 applicant. Um, on that application. You're applying for undergraduate studies, but you're a non-Year 12 applicant. You're, you're not applying through alternate entry. Uh, and the most important part of your UAC application is going to be that there's a section on this um, application where it asks you to list your preparatory uh, program, your preparatory course. So please uh, select that and list Open Foundation, New Step or your PUG. Uh, there's a drop down menu there and it will allow you to select open foundation. Failure to select that there on this application means that uh, your application may be void because they don't know that you're completing open foundation, new step or your pug. So that's a really important step of your UAC application. Um, when you get to the end, print or download the application summary. So you've got a record of that. Um, as Sharon mentioned before, the Educational Access Scheme or EAS can apply also to your UAC application. If throughout your studies, you have been disadvantaged in some form or another, and you would like to submit an additional form called EAS, then you can also do on uh, your UAC application as well. Uh, again, the website is down there below. So it's just uac.edu.au. Um, if, you, if you haven't started your application, it's not too late. Um, you can definitely still go there, but fees do apply. Next one, please. Thank you. We'll just quickly talk over the application uh, for the Bachelor of Midwifery at the University of Newcastle. So you'll need to submit your application by the 9th of December. Um, the process for applying for midwifery has recently changed. So I'll just quickly go over that for you. There are now three separate UAC codes. Um, as you can see there, uh, there is a Hunter placement, a Central Coast placement, and a North Coast placement, all having different UAC codes. So please list them in order of preference. If your first preference is the Hunter region, then that would be your first preference for midwifery. If you can also then get to the Central Coast for placement, then you are able to list it as, as a second option, and the same for the North Coast placement. So um, placement is a huge component of that, and you do need to be able to get to that placement when, when selecting um, these preferences. You can see there that offers for the Bachelor of Midwifery won't be until the 13th of January, so a little bit later than some of, some of the other degrees, just so you're aware. Um, on this same application, you are able to list your other preferences, and we strongly encourage you to list the Bachelor of Nursing as a backup plan um, on this same application. And then also a degree from 
the guaranteed entry list at the University of Newcastle, such as the Bachelor of Arts. So as we know, guaranteed entry, um, it is what it sounds like. It's, it's an assured place for you if you've passed your 40 units in Open Foundation. So we encourage UAC applicants and also direct applicants to include a guaranteed entry degree on that application because you are assured of a place. Um, also, if you're applying for the Bachelor of Midwifery, you're likely to receive an offer for the Bachelor of Nursing before the 13th of January. So in this instance, if this is you, and then you've received an offer for the Bachelor of Nursing before the Bachelor of Midwifery, then our advice is for you to accept the offer for the Bachelor of Nursing, because then what happens is, come 13th of January, if you are also successful in gaining a place for the Bachelor of Midwifery, we encourage you then to accept that offer, which will then cancel out the previous offer automatically for you. Um, so that's quite a normal process, just because of the staggered ordering of, of the, the offer degrees. So by accepting another offer, it doesn't stop you from getting the midwifery offer, but it's just um, the way it's going to roll out. And then once you, on the 13th of January, if you get the offer for the Bachelor of Midwifery, we um, strongly encourage you to accept that one, which then cancels out your previous um, acceptance offers. Next slide. Thank you. Um, so listing your preferences. So listing your preferences means that um, you're going to list them in the order that you want to study them. And we, we ask you not to include degrees that you wouldn't want to study or that you're not going to accept. Um, so just to recap, on your direct application to the University of Newcastle, you're able to list three degrees in order um, of, of how you want to um, study them. Um, and again, you should also list one degree as, uh, from the guaranteed entry list as your backup plan. So um, it can be the third preference if, that, if, that's, um, if you have two others that are not guaranteed that a competitive entry, just making sure you've got one guaranteed entry degree on your application. Uh, the same with UAC, however, you're allowed to list five degrees on this application and you can list degrees with lower uh, cutoff uh, marks on that application. Um, and we've just highlighted again there, um, when you're applying for another university besides the University of Newcastle, please contact that university and have a quick discussion. Um, if you can get through to their admissions department, we encourage you to try to contact their admissions department and have a, a quick discussion about um, applying as an Open Foundation student to that university and for that particular degree. Okay, next slide. I'm going to hand over to Danielle now. Hi everyone, thanks Leah. Um, so who can help me if I have further questions? So just on to the next slide for me, Sharon. All right, so we are your student liaison officers, depending on what campus or mode you're studying. So we can help you with various things, such as if you wanted to have a chat about the order, you should list your preferences for the applications. Um, if you had any other questions about the direct or the UAC application process, um, advice around hex and fees and accessing university services. So whether that's um, different kinds of academic support or mental health wellbeing support as well, or anything else the university offers such as careers. So the next slide please should be a bit about careers. Yes, so unsure what to study, browse our degrees, explore links between areas of study, and potentially make an appointment with a careers advisor. So if you go to the um, URL at the bottom there, newcastle.edu.au slash careers, you'll be able to see a bunch of information from our careers services team, but you can actually make an appointment with a careers advisor through Career Hub um, if you wanted to have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with them about any questions you have about potential future careers. And just onto the next slide for me, please. We do have some questions, some frequently asked questions we'll go through with you. So, sorry, Danielle, thanks very much for that. I'm just gonna go back. I'm just gonna stop sharing this screen and I'm gonna get the, um, the frequently asked questions up from the Your Next Move page. 
So we should be back to that and I will just bear with me. <clears throat> Okay, can we see that, Goyles? We all good? Yes. Yep. Excellent. All right, I'll just get the little screen out of the way. <clears throat> so, Danielle, I'm. Um, if you'd like to go on with that first question, thanks very much. Thanks, Sharon. So, question one: Can I change my preferences or application details? Easy answer is yes. Um, there may be dates that are associated with changing those details. But if you have applied directly to the University of Newcastle, you can simply log back into your Ask UON account and follow these instructions on the screen to go to your application section, open it and make any changes and then resubmit your application. So all the changes do need to be made before the application closing date. Um, and if you have applied through UAC, you'll need to log back into your UAC application with your PIN, um, and application number, as mentioned by Leah, to make those changes. Okay, I'll just get up the next question for you, Danielle. Thank you. Yeah. How will my application be assessed? So we have mentioned um, a university admission rank, UAR. We've also mentioned a selection rank and um, ATAR. So your university admission rank <coughs> is your version of an ATAR. So the university admission rank is calculated based on your grades you receive in your enabling pathways program, whether that's Open Foundation, USTEP or your PUG. If the admission rank is higher than what's required for your first preference, um, then you can receive an offer for your first preference. Um, this is where we recommend if you're First preference is not a guaranteed entry program. This is why we recommend including a guaranteed entry program in your application somewhere. But if your first preference is on the guaranteed entry list, that is totally fine and it doesn't matter if it's your first preference, leave it as your first preference in the application. Did you wanna add something, Sharon? Sorry, I was just going to suggest um, the UAR estimator tool that everyone can use on the Your Next Move website. Um, it's a really good tool where you can actually calculate um, your own um, university admission rank based on the results that you achieve in your studies. And you can do that right now. Um, in some cases, you'd probably just be um, playing around with it and making up the results if you haven't got full results yet for your um, your studies. <clears throat> Sorry That's about great. that, Danielle. No, you're I'll fine. Thank you so much, Sharon. That's a great open addition. up the third question for you. And so we have spoken about the guaranteed admission scheme before, so hopefully you're all on top of this. But if not, um, we do have a list of about 40 bachelor degrees offered at the University of Newcastle that you can get guaranteed entry into as long as you have successfully completed your Open Foundation, New Step or your PUG program. So as long as you've passed and you've finished the qualification, you can get guaranteed entry into those degrees. So have a look. There's a bunch of different ones on offer. Um, so we recommend doing that when you are putting your application in. So I'll hand over to Leah now to go over some of the other questions. Thank you, thanks. Okay, so we get asked this question quite a fair bit. Do I need to wait for my final results before I apply? So the answer to that is no. So you can submit your application as soon as it opens. You don't need to wait until you receive your results you will be able to access your application to update your preferences or provide supporting documents until the closing date. So what that means is you, once you've submitted it, you, you have the option to log back in to change the order of the preferences or add those documents if need be. Um, going back to those dates of the timeline of, of the application process, there are only a few days between when you get your final results, the fully graded date, and the direct application closing date. So if your application is submitted um, nice and early and then you do wish to change it after you get your grades, you can do so, but there's only a few days. Um, in the event of a late 
grade or an incomplete grade, we can still process your application later as long as it's been submitted before the closing date. Okay. So what if I don't get an offer to the degree that I want? You are strongly recommended to include a degree from the guaranteed admission scheme in your preferences. That way, if you don't get the marks to the, um, the first or second preference on your application, you can still start undergraduate studies at the University of Newcastle. Um, the plan would then be for you to look at choosing some courses in this progress program while temporarily studying uh, another degree and aiming to look at transferring at a later date, depending on your marks. So just know that if you've started in a degree, perhaps it's one of the guaranteed entry degrees, but your plan wasn't to study that great degree, keep going, contact a, um, the university staff members for support, and you'll be guided on, on to put a plan on how you can transfer at a later stage to another degree. And the next question is, uh, what if I don't finish my enabling pathways program? Un unfortunately, if you do not successfully complete your enabling pathways program, we will unable, uh, we will be sorry, unable to offer you a place in one of our undergraduate degrees. If you've included documentation, um, such as other certificates or qualifications, as part of this original application, there may still be an opportunity uh, for you to be given an offer based on, on those um, qualifications if you've met the requirements, if you didn't finish your enabling program. Um, if you haven't finished your, um, the required units in your enabling uh, pathways program, we will contact you with some options on how to um, go forward and perhaps look at coming back to uh, re-attempt the program um, and we'll, we'll go into that further with you. So we do contact you and give you those options. Um, so if you are eligible to continue in your enabling pathways program, we'll contact you again um, with advice on options for completing that program in the following semester. Um, so just here, there's some key points. Um, on the options site to calculate your progress, to view enrollment guides and key dates and check the options to complete your program. So that's just knowing what the requirements are of the program and important dates. Um, there's a link there, just, oh, sorry, sharing, scroll sorry. down a little bit more. There is a link there really uh, for you to visit that um, options site if you do have any questions about the progress of your enabling program pathways um, uh, program. So check that out there. Um, and get in touch if you have any questions about your progress in your studies. Back over to you, um, Sharon. Thank you very much. Sorry about that. Um, okay, I need to study my degree online. What are my options? <clears throat> so the University of Newcastle um, degrees do provide some flexibility um, what, with what they mostly call blended um, offerings of online and face-to-face -face courses. Um, however, there are a selection of university degrees that are actually offered fully online. <clears throat> um, for example, I know off the top of my head, the Bachelor of Arts can now be studied fully online. Our um, Bachelor of Construction Management is also an online program. Um, and a lot of the other um, degrees that, or all of the other degrees, they do have this blended offering. So you might be doing a, um, a blend of what they refer to as both online and face-to-face -face courses. You would need to actually have a look at each individual degree that you were interested in to see what their offerings were and if it was available for um, online study. And as you can see there, if you can't see an online degree at the University of Newcastle that suits you, um, check the relevant tertiary admission centre in each state to search for online degrees at other institutions. So um, if you are restricted to only being able to study online, um, the um, tertiary admission centre in other states can perhaps provide you with some other opportunities. I think the, um, the University of New England does provide a lot of online study options as well, but um, it'll be that you'll need to do a little bit of research to see what um, degrees could suit you in other states if and other universities if necessary. 
Um, this next question is also really commonly asked. Can I take a break before I start my degree? <clears throat> um, the simple answer is yes, you can. Um, so if you're accepted into an undergraduate program at the University of Newcastle, you can defer your admission to the program for up to one year. So you might decide you only want to do um, half a, uh, not half a semester, but half a year, you might just decide to defer for one semester. That will actually be dependent on the degree that you've chosen um, or been offered a place in. If it happens to be something like the Bachelor of Nursing or the Bachelor of Midwifery, unfortunately, if you do defer your program, you would have to defer it for a whole year and because it's based on the intake of that particular program. But you can certainly choose to defer your place in that degree and commence studies um, a maximum of one year down the track. Um, and the next question, what is compulsory attendance and does it apply to me? This gets asked a lot um, because it's something that was introduced, I believe, in the last um, year or so. Mm -hmm. But it says the University of Newcastle requires all students in what they call 1000 level undergraduate courses. So 1000 level means first year courses um, in undergraduate to maintain an 80% attendance rate in order to sit their final exam. This only applies to smaller classes like tutorials, workshops, laboratories, and does not apply to lectures. So this requirement will not apply to students while they are studying an enabling pathways program. So open foundation, new step or your pug. So your attendance is not monitored while you're studying in our programs. Um, but some undergraduate courses above the 1000 level do have an existing attendance requirement, which will be identified in the course outline. So undergraduate courses, um, the same as our courses in Open Foundation, New Step and Your Pug, you'll have a course outline for each one of them and that information will be identified in there for you. We do, however, recommend you attend as many of your classes as possible as there will be um, documented links between high attendance and student success. So that can be really helpful for, to you um, going into a degree, you know, sometimes um, ensuring that you attend as many classes as possible can actually be the key to your success in passing. Okay, so that's probably the list of the most common questions and you can access those questions yourself and have a look at all the answers through the Your Next Move page. So that's the actual page. And if you have a look, you should be able to see the, um, the URL at the top of the screen there. I'm actually just going to stop sharing this girl so we can um, go back to our other slide. And I will get the other screen back up. There it is, disappeared on me. So Danielle, would you like to finish this off for us? Well, I'd like to say thank you to everyone for watching. I hope it's been helpful. But if you have questions that haven't been answered or you just need to clarify something, please reach out to us. Um, we have one general email that can be seen there, pals-slow at newcastle.edu.au. And then depending on where you're studying, either Sharon, myself or Leah will reach out to you. There, we do have individual phone numbers as well if you'd prefer to contact us that way. And then the URL at the bottom, newcastle.edu.au slash your next move is where you can find the direct application and a lot of the information we have gone over today. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Lee, did you have anything else you wanted to add? Uh, just thank you for joining in today and watching the session. We wish you all the best for the remainder of the semester and your upcoming final assessments, everyone. And uh, please get in touch if you have further questions regarding your application. Take care. Wonderful. Cheers. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, thank girls, you. for Bye. joining. Bye.